You put... Uh, yeah. Uh, you must be mad. Is it right? I hope I wasn't too hard to find in its crush. Um, it's difficult trying to describe yourself. No, oh, I'd have found you. Of course, sir. Uh, I had the advantage. <laughs> I doubt that. No, I meant I had some idea what you'd look like. I thought there might be a family. Look, so... sunshine, there's only one reason I came looking for you. And it's got nothing to do with brotherhood, OK? Stay away from Lillian. What? You've been bothering her while I've been in prison. Bothering her? Is that what she says? It's what I say that counts. Stay away from her. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Good. Then you've got the message. Look, I think there's been some sort of misunderstanding. Come on, Jude. Answer it. I'm not here right now, but if you want to leave a message, that's cool. Jude, it's me, Pip again. I'm sorry, I know I've rung before. But I haven't heard from you since Friday morning now, and... And, well, I'm starting to get a bit worried. I mean, I hope you're having a great time somewhere. But could you just text and say you're all right? Oh, Jude, where are you? So is that clear? No visits, no calls, no texts, no Christmas cards. Can't you trust Lillian? Of course I can. It's you I don't trust. Me? Why not? I've got your number, mate. I know your game. I don't have a game. Yeah, right. You've been cozying up to Lillian for the good of your health, I suppose. Oh, for goodness sake. That was the plan, wasn't it? What plan? Wait till I'm safely under lock and key and then make your move. What move? You deaf as well as stupid. No. Then stop repeating everything I say. I don't understand what you're saying. There was no plan. I came to find you. Right. To tell you our mother was dying. Oh, convenient excuse. Excuse? Yeah, just the kind of thing to tug Lillian's artistry. I didn't know about Lillian. I didn't even know you were in prison. So you say. How would I know? It was in the papers. And you seem to have contacts up here. I suppose that's another coincidence. Yes, it is. Poor the other one. You saw the chance you've been waiting for ever since your mother told you Lillian and I were loaded. Oh, this is a complete fantasy. Mum barely talked about you. All you had to do was wait until Lillian was at her lowest end. Oh, for God's sake. I think you've been tripping poison in her ear. Telling her I'd let her down. You don't know Lillian very well if you think she'd let me say anything like that. Oh, I know her. And don't you forget it. Actually, she spent most of the time sympathising with me, listening to my troubles. Oh, yeah, 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 I bet she did. Yeah, you knew how to play her. Lillian's a sucker for a sob story. What was it going to be? Temporary cash flow problem, children's wedding... I didn't ask her for money. We're friends. Just good friends, yeah? Yes. Yeah, that was your best card, I suppose. More red-blooded male might have tried to get her into bed, but I can see that's not your style. No. Taking advantage of vulnerable women isn't something I like to do. Like you had the chance. You think I didn't? Are you telling me different? I'm not telling you anything. If Lillian hasn't gone into details about the time we spent together, then it's not my place to. Don't try that old trick with me. Lillian's told me everything. Well, she's an honest woman. And it was just a dinner dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course it was. Perfectly innocent, as it turned out. No thanks to you, I'm sure. You take advantage of Lillian's kind eye. And you never have. She's forgiven you enough times. That is not your business. She is not your business. I'm back, I'll protect her, I'll support her now. <laughs> That'll be a first. Oh, you're starting to irritate me. Because I'm telling you the truth. Because Lillian confided in me when she couldn't talk to you. Please answer this time. Please. Now, who could this be, I wonder? <laughs> Jude! Oh, thank goodness. Oh, it's wonderful to hear your voice. <laughs> Good to hear you too, babe. I've been so worried. Well, so I gathered. I'm surprised there was any room left on my voicemail. This phone's got more capacity than I thought. I'm sorry. Oh, that's OK. Just tell me you haven't sent the search parties out. I thought about it. Oh, Fizz. What are you like? I hadn't heard from you since Friday morning. So naturally I was dead in a ditch? I suppose it was a bit silly. Well, there was a much more likely explanation. What do I like doing most in the world, apart from being with you? 
Um... I'll give you a clue. It involves the words mate and Cornwall. <laughs> You've been in Cornwall? Not too much sunshine to waste stewing in Borchester. I knew you couldn't come with your exam and all. Right. I did think we were going to do something after I'd finished my exam, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. All the excitement, it completely slipped my mind. It's OK. Only that's why I was so worried. Yeah, I see that. Really, I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you, promise. If you'd just let me know... Yeah, I would have, but I left my phone behind. Like I said, it was a rush. You couldn't have borrowed someone else's. I suppose I could. I'll remember that next time. Next time? Though hopefully you'll be free of this exam nonsense and be able to come with me. Yeah, I hope so. It would be nice to see you now. Aren't you buried in your books? I have been, well, but... I could take a break, though. So are we done? Do I make myself clear? Crystal. Have you managed to convince yourself, though? What are you talking about? <laughs> you spent the last few minutes trying to convince yourself nothing happened between me and Lillian. Nothing did. You never knew her. Oh, but I did know her. And I'll never forget her. Well, I'd advise you to try it, otherwise I might have to get nasty. Oh, perish the thought. Oh, you've got a smart mouth on you. If you'd been inside, someone would have stopped it for you. Ah, good job you're the only jailbird in the family then, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you really are a lot like Mum. She was a tart who dumped me. Why should I care? She was a bully too, just like you. She was good at protecting her own interests, I'll give her that. Pity you don't take after her. Oh, I won't see Lillian again. And it's not because I'm frightened of you. Whatever. As long as we've seen the last of you. It's nothing to do with you. I don't want to cause Lillian any more unhappiness. You shouldn't either. I don't need to take advice from you. You are a lucky man. Take care of her. I intend to. Right. Nothing more to say then, is there? Goodbye. Oh, it sounds it. You could tell me all about it if you came round. To yours? Well, I don't know. I told you, I'm due a break. It's just I'm fairly knackered. We could chill. Watch a DVD up in my room. But it's not that long since I was banned from even driving up the drive, let alone setting foot in your bedroom. We're over all that now. I'm also sure your dad is. Well, that doesn't matter, he's not here. Oh, fizz, I don't know. I've just driven back from Cornwall. I really don't fancy going out again. Not even to see me? Well, of course I want to see you. Why don't you come over here? It's a bit too far to bike. I'll send one of the lads to fetch you. And you can stay the night. I'd love to, but I really can't spare the time. I thought you said you wanted to take a break. Yeah, for the afternoon. I need to be hard back at it this evening. Oh, right. Sorry. But I have got two exams on Tuesday. This Tuesday? Yeah, business studies and biology, Tuesday afternoon. I thought you'd done business studies. It's in two parts. That's a drag. Yeah, tell me about it. No, I meant that you've got exams on Tuesday. Oh, why? Did you have something planned for us? Oh, yeah. There's a new club opening in Felpshire. Got a DJ coming over from Brum and everything. I reckon I could get us on the guest list. Really? But if you're doing exams... Well, only in the day. I mean, that'd be great. I could really celebrate. And after Tuesday, I haven't got another exam till Friday. But the opening's Monday. Oh... I see. I thought you weren't supposed to be coming out the night before your exams. Oh, not necessarily. What, no last-minute revision? Not if I get it all done now. You stay in and chill. I'll stay in and work this afternoon and evening, and then do all the same tomorrow daytime. Well, then you really will need a break. <laughs> exactly. Of course I'll come. It'll be fine. Matt! I didn't expect you back so soon. Ah, uh, there wasn't that much to say. Well, well I, I don't see how that can be true. After all these years That apart. we wanted to say. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, Pussycat. I know how you set your heart on some fairy tale happy ending. I just hope you might become, well, friends, if nothing else. Why would we? We've got nothing in common. Except you. You really... Didn't feel anything, not one tiny little spark. Not a flicker. Not a family affection, anyway. Well, that is a bit much to hope for at your first meeting. And our last. 
Oh, Matt. Couldn't you give it one more try? What would be the point? I was so sure you'd like him. I did. Yeah, you were lonely. I suppose that was his excuse, too. He didn't need an excuse. All I'm saying is, you were thrown together by the circumstance. I was away. Well, yes. Yeah, and now I'm back, so you don't need him anymore. And I certainly don't. Paul must have been disappointed. He could see it was time for him to bow out gracefully. Is that what he said? Yeah, he seemed to think it was what you said. What you wanted him to do. Did he? That was my impression. So he talked about our... friendship? Enough for me to see why it would be hard for him to say goodbye, yeah. It was you too I was concerned with. I, oh, I did so hope you might bond. Look. You needed something to keep you occupied while I was inside. I understand that. It gave you someone to look after. Paul? I wouldn't say that. Oh, Lillian, I know you and your lame dogs. Is that what you think he was? Wasn't he? Matt, look, you mustn't... I need to explain. No, you don't need to explain anything. I know how lonely you were. So lonely you invented this fantasy. Fantasy? Yeah, you and me and Paul, one happy family. Well, I hoped it might come true. Well, you don't need it to. I'm back. I'm here. And I'm here to stay. I know. I'll never leave you lonely like that again, I promise. I'll make it right. Oh, Matt. You're all the family I need, all the friends, everything. And I'm lucky you waited for me. Of course I did. I was never going to do anything else. Well, why should Paul interest me? I want to devote all my time and energy to you. Me too, sweetheart. Ditto. You start for us. Whatever happened in the past, that's over. This time, this time we'll do it right. Together. It's uh, very kind of you to give me a hand with my stuff. That's no problem. It, good job I was here. Mm. You don't believe in travelling light, do you? Well, I do rather like having my own stuff around me. Ooh, great laptop. Yeah, I like to watch DVDs. Oh, we've got a great TV in the family room. Well, I don't want to intrude. But you won't. No, Mum and Sid spend all their spare time packing. I could do with the company. <laughs> oh, Alan. Hello. Hi, Harry. Hi, Hi yeah. <laughs> What's this? A car boot sale? Well, maybe I did pack too much. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's going to be staying with us. Oh, I see. What, to be nearer the milk round? Oh, no, no, not permanently. I've, I've come for the single wicket. Look, that's not till next week, though. It's so we can take part. If I stay here, I count as an Ambridge resident. My goodness, you are keen. <laughs> I bet Alistair's pleased, isn't he? He is. Well, quite a few signed up now. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Jamie for the first time, and Josh. They can't wait. Well, neither can I. <sighs> I think that's very that's sad. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Impressive. <laughs> Going to so much trouble. You're really making an effort to become part of the community, aren't you? I wish everyone could see that. Well, I just like playing cricket. Isn't that how people see it? Mm, yes, mainly. Look, Harry, why don't you take some of this stuff in? Yeah. I'll get the rest out of the boot. Right you are. <laughs> He's a nice bloke. He is. People are being so mean about him. It's really unfair. Well, is there really that much opposition to him taking part in a single wicket? People say he's bending the rules to enter. Oh, that's small-minded. Mm. It's only a game. Oh, plus, he mentioned it on the Grange Farm website. And now some of his customers want to sponsor him. For charity, you know. Well, that's better and better. Mm. You're not telling me people are objecting to that. Well, it's never been done before. Yeah, but well, all the more credit to him. I think it's a great idea. Well, I wish you'd say so. If people thought that you approved... Well, I do. Well, I might be better to make that clear with more than words. Leave it with me. Paul, it's Lillian again. I know we've all decided it's probably for the best if we don't meet again, but well, I just wanted to be sure that... That you were OK. Lillian, have you seen a big blue folder? Bye now. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were on the phone. Uh, no, wasn't important. Uh, blue folders on the coffee table. Oh, yeah, can't see for looking. Are you working? 
Just wanted to flesh out a few ideas I've jotted down. Oh, for our new company? Yeah, then we can talk them through later. Oh, right. Oh, um, I'm going out to lunch with Jenny, remember? Oh, right, yeah, that's OK. We can do it when you get back. I hope you don't feel I'm deserting you. No, of course not. Don't worry about me. There's soup and salad for you. I won't starve. Might even pop down the ball. Really? Make the most of my freedom before I have to get back inside. <laughs> Matt, it hasn't been that bad, has it? No, not for me, but you're the one that's stuck with me every evening. Do you good to get out too. I like being stuck with you. Oh, that is sweet of you to say so, puss. It's true. And that tag will soon come off and then we'll be out on the razzle before you know it. Right, well, that looks like everything. Oh, thanks for all your help. That's no problem. All part of the bull hospitality. Uh, and don't forget, you can use the family room any time you like. I'll, I'll remember. But you won't be offended if I do want to spend some time in here, will you? No, of course not. Just don't feel you have to. Well, I'm quite looking forward to it. It'll be a novelty. Don't tell me you haven't got your own room at home. We, yes, of course I have. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a relief. <laughs> I know you live with your parents, but that would have just been weird. Mm, they're great, only since I moved back in with them after uni. They have been a bit... Intrusive. Mm, I don't mean to be. I am quite a bit younger than my brother and sister. Oh, the precious late baby. <sighs> the baby, anyway. Mm. I don't think they're ever going to believe I've grown up. So always coming into my room to check if... You haven't fallen out of your cot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, something like that. Well, I promise I won't come in to check your breathing. Thanks. You know, if there's anything I can do, if you, if you do ever need a hand in the bar... I worked in the students' union, so I know what I'm doing. Oh, well, thanks for the offer. But um, no, we're well covered this week. Nick's doing some extra shifts to get her hand in for when Kirsty leaves and Mum and Sid go to New Zealand next week. Oh. OK, I'll leave you to it. Right. Uh, there was just one thing. What, you want me to unpack? <laughs> Your parents always did it for you. No. <laughs> it's something you said. Are people not happy about me entering for the single wicket? Oh, don't worry. Some people in this village object to anything new on principle. Or anyone new. All right, now you're just fishing for compliments. You know that's not true. With your fan club. Is that the problem, though? Jazza did say something about my blog stirring things up. Oh, take no notice of him. He's just jealous. Really? Well, put it like this. He's never been interested in the single wicket. Oh, hasn't he? And plus, you've got all the old ladies on the milk round eating out of your hand. Not to mention their dogs. Oh, I didn't think Jazza minded about the old ladies, as long as I left in the young ones. <laughs> This is nice. Mmm, isn't it? Nice, relaxing drink in the sunshine. Bit different from our little party last week. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I'm afraid Matt's going to take a bit of time to ease back into polite society. Well, that's natural. What's Brian's excuse? <laughs> <laughs> he won't be joining us for lunch, by the way. He's, uh... Helping Adam tag the deer calves, and they've taken sandwiches. Oh, so just the two of us. Yes. So you can tell me how things really are between you and Matt. Good. He's, uh, he's being sweet. Very sweet, actually. Well, that sounds sinister. No. Oh, what? Oh, it's all so complicated. I suppose it would have been anyway, but... Then adding Paul to the equation. Paul. Oh, Jenny, before Matt came home, he... He told me he had feelings for me. Oh, Lillian, couldn't you see that coming? Maybe, yeah. So, what did you say? That I was flattered. This friendship meant a lot to me. <laughs> that old chestnut. But it did. But there's no way I could take it any further. No? No. I love Matt. You know I do. It was impossible. How did he react? He understood. He's such a kind man. Yes. I told him I hope we could all be friends. The three of you? Well, yes. You know I wanted him and Matt to bond as brothers. Before he told you he was in love with you. Well, I didn't want to mess it up for them. Oh, Lillian, come on. No, I was right. When I told Matt about it... You, he... you told Matt? 
Paul had feelings for you? Well, not that, obviously. I said Paul wanted to meet him and, and Matt agreed he'd do it. Did he? So, uh, when is this family reunion going to happen? It has. They met on Sunday. Oh. And? It didn't work out. Oh, surprise, surprise. Well, thank God for that. Oh, honestly, Lillian, talk about playing with fire. Matt said he wanted to concentrate all his energies on me. Well, maybe something good has come out of it then. Well, for us, yes, but I'm just worried how Paul might have taken it. Oh, Lillian. I've tried ringing him, but he, he doesn't answer. It's not like him. But of course he's not answering. You gave him the brush off and now Matt has. I'd just like to know if he's all right. Oh, I don't suppose he is. As you said, he's a kind man. And he doesn't want to tell you that. What would be the point? <sighs> it's over, isn't it? Matt doesn't want a relationship with him and you can't have one. Can you? No. No. Matt and me, that's what matters now. Well, it is if you think Matt truly wants this new start. Well, I know he does. You know, he didn't question me about Paul. Didn't he? Not at all. Just said we should put it all behind us. He was... He was really gentle with me. Oh, heavens. Maybe prison has changed him after all. Sid hasn't seen her for years. I mean, you can imagine how excited he is. Your mum must be too. About going to New Zealand. She could live without seeing Lucy between you and me. Why is that? She thinks that Lucy resents her for marrying Sid. Really? Mm. She never liked Cathy when he was married to her either. Well, it, Sid was married to Cathy? Yeah, Cathy Perks. The name's a bit of a giveaway. <sighs> I, I didn't make the connection. <laughs> So how did you think that Jamie fitted in? Well, I was still trying to work that out. <laughs> I was hoping living here might give me a few clues. <laughs> oh, Harry. You don't know how complicated this village is. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll do you potted biographies on everyone who comes into the bar. Ah, that'd be a start. So, here comes Alan Franks. I know, the vicar. But do you know that he was a widower with a daughter before he married the lovely Usha? He's got a daughter? Yes, Amy. She's away training to be a midwife. I'm glad you two are still here. Oh. I've, uh, I've got some good news about the single wicket. Oh. How do you fancy a rival in the sponsorship stakes? Great. The more the merrier. That's what I thought you'd say. So who have you persuaded to be sponsored? I didn't take much persuading. It's me. You? <laughs> oh, Alan, that's great. I thought it might take the heat off a bit. Huh. I just wanted to check it with Shula first. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have done that. Oh, no, no, don't worry. She's right behind it. Can't imagine why no one has ever thought of it before. Well, as long as she doesn't think I've jumped the gun. She thinks you're a public benefactor for coming up with the idea. Great. Now let people object. <laughs> <laughs> Amside Properties. Yeah, I like it. It's got a ring to it. We'd better think about registering it then. Really? No point hanging about. The market's ready and waiting. Well, then we need to start thinking about finding someone to work in the office. Yeah, but... You know, Lynn, I've been thinking about the logistics, and I know I said we shouldn't do this, but maybe it would be a good idea for you to work in the office, just until we get the business up and running. Then we can employ someone later. What do you think? <laughs> I'd love to. You sure? Oh, Matt, like I said, it'll be our company. We'll be working together, and that's all that matters to me. Great. Now, I need your good business sense. If I'd listened to you before... Oh, none of that. This is a new start, remember? I do. Might even call for a little celebration. How do you feel about having Jenny and Brian round for dinner? What, after last week? Well, because of last week. We could get it right this time. We did rather get off on the wrong foot. Well, then let's start again. Yeah, why not? Really? Yeah, I know they looked after you while I was away. I'd like to say thank you. Just didn't come out properly last week. <laughs> we'll make it work this time. When shall we ask them for? Let me consult my diary. <laughs> See which evenings I'm in. <laughs> oh, that's handy, all of them. <laughs> well, let's say Friday, then. Just give me time to plan. Friday it is. Great. I'll ring Jenny now.
You're okay, Pat. How's it going? Oh, hi, love. Uh, okay, I think we've got quite a lot done. I should walk so the time you got up. Well, we need to crack on. I want to get the silaging finished by tomorrow. I think you'll manage. Oh, just have to hope the weather holds. Any sign of Pip surfacing yet? Not so you'd notice. You know, I practically bumped into her coming in when I was getting out. Isn't that just a bit of an exaggeration? Well, it's not much of one. I suppose we have Jude to thank for that. I took her in a cup of tea. She did mutter something about car trouble. Oh, not that lame excuse again. I don't know. First he goes swanning off without a word to her and leaves her fretting all weekend when she should have been revising. She did revise. And when he comes back, he keeps her out so late. She's going to screw up her exams anyway. Well, at least they're not till this afternoon. Well, I suppose that's something. Hopefully she'll have caught up on her sleep by then. And she has been working hard. Oh, I know. I'm just disappointed. I was hoping the way he treated her would make her see through him. Doesn't look like it. No. Yeah, here we are, back in the same old routine. She did say she'd get back early last night. If you really did have car trouble... Well, there's no use going over it. How's she planning to get into Borchester, then? You running a taxi service as usual, I suppose? Jude's collecting it. Oh, is he? She managed to tell me that just before she dived back under the covers. <laughs> so much for the car trouble. I suppose he got it fixed last night. Uh, yeah, well, if you believe that, Ruth, you'll believe anything. Can you lift it up a bit more your end? Then I could ease it round. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, how's that? Great. Now, if we just turn it round a bit. Is that far enough? Hang on. Yeah, that's fine. We can put it down now. Oh, oh I think we deserve a bit of a breather. Oh, we certainly do. Still, that's three more done. Oh, 300. Oh, hardly. That's what it feels like. I seem to have been moving pigs in arcs forever. Well, think how satisfied you'll feel when it's all done. Oh, knackered is what I'll feel. <sighs> Thanks for giving us a hand this morning. Well, you couldn't have managed single-handed. No, I couldn't. I presume Jazza's catching up on some beauty sleep. Yeah, he'll be in this afternoon. In a better mood, I hope. Huh? What's the matter with him? Harry's moved into the ball, so he can count as an Ambridge resident for the single wicket. Well, why should Jazza mind? He doesn't play cricket. It's the moving into the bull bit he doesn't like. Too close to Fallon. Well, I didn't know there was anything going on between Jazza and Fallon these days. There isn't supposed to be. But you'd never guess it the way Jazza's carrying on. Oh, dear. And he's had his nose put out of joint by Harry on the milk round too, hasn't he? Oh, well, I don't know what he's worrying about. The pigs still love him. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the timetable for Monday, all the get-outs and get-ins. Very impressive. It's positively military. It's what we need. I want you to check I haven't missed anything. Right you are. Nigel, you're squinting. <laughs> Where are your reading glasses? Well, that's a very good question. You probably left them upstairs when you were reading the paper at breakfast. Of course, that'll be it. I'll go and get them. I shan't be a jiffy. You really should get a spare pair. Yeah. Good morning, Lower Loxley. Elizabeth Parchett is speaking. Thank goodness. Pip, whatever's the matter? I've done the most awful thing. I got back really late last night, so I slept in. Yeah? I saw my exams for this afternoon, so it wouldn't matter. Well, but they aren't. No, they're this morning. I should be there now. OK, look, don't panic. But there's no one to take me. Dad's out silaging. I can't raise Mum. So you want me to give you a lift? Would you? I just couldn't think of anyone else I might ask. I'll be over there as soon as I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Deep breaths. It'll be all right. Car keys, car keys. Would you yes. believe it? I left them on the window ledge halfway up the stairs. Uh, I must have... Nigel, I've got to go out. Pip's late for exam. There's no one else to take her. Oh, heavens. Yeah, I'll be as quick as I can. Bye. Well, tell her good luck. Uh-huh. So, um, how is Brenda's new job going? I don't really know, to be honest. We're both so tired in the evenings, we just eat something and fall into bed. Ah, uh, once you get the pigs moved and she's a bit more settled, I'm sure things will calm down. Uh, I hope so. Have you got some rush back to the carrots, Dad? Oh, no, no, keep. I'm enjoying my coffee. Only, I've got this new project in mind for the business, mm. and I'd like to talk it through with you, if this is a good time. Ah, uh, very good. I could do with something to occupy my mind. No, uh, why's that? Uh, it's this week that Helen finds out if she's pregnant. Ah, yeah. And quite frankly, I'm dreading the outcome, either way. So, go ahead. What's on your mind? 
I was wondering about maybe adding veal and ham pie to our range. Oh, yeah? What's put this into your head? I just happened to be looking at some figures. It seemed to me there'd be a decent market for a quality product. Well, I've no idea. I certainly haven't seen many. I was thinking, we're producing the calves, they're going for veal anyway. If we were to buy some back for our own products... And we've got the pig meat, of course. Exactly. We'd be adding to our existing brands. With the outlets to sell it. Mm. And I think I could get my existing sausage and bacon customers interested. Mm, I'm sure you could. Um, we'd have some veal left over. High-end stuff. We could easily sell it on. Mm. Oh, it's a great idea, Tom. Covers all the bases. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I don't know why we didn't think of it before. Sometimes you overlook an opportunity that's right under your nose. Mm, well done you for spotting it. It'd need more research, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'll get on to it. Just as soon as I've moved these blasted pigs. <laughs> all right. I was such an idiot not to check. There's no point brooding about it. We all make silly mistakes. Not about something so important. Usually exactly then, unfortunately. I was so sure it was this afternoon. Yeah, I know you were. Maybe if I hadn't gone out late last night, I would have checked. It's no good thinking that but now. I hadn't seen Jude for such a long time, and I'd been working so hard. I know you have. I really did mean to get back home for an early night, but we were on our way back. Yeah, you said. That's when the warning light came on, something wrong with the car. Oh, that's always a nightmare. We had to call someone out, and then it took them ages to find out what the problem was. It really isn't helpful to keep going over it. You can't change what happened now. Mum and Dad are going to be so angry. I'm sure they won't be. Come on, you made an honest mistake. They can't blame you for that. I just read the timetable wrong, but oh, if I hadn't been out late, I, I might have got up in the morning to check it. Look, lots of things might have happened. They'll think it's all Jude's fault. Come on, let's concentrate on what's happening now. You're on your way to your exam. So late. Hopefully you'll get there in time to do some of the paper. Not much. Oh, every little helps. Why don't you take a look through your notes? Worry about everything else later. Oh, I needed that. I should think you did, the time you had breakfast. Mm. Do you want another one? Oh, in a minute. Thanks for bringing this up, though. Ah, oh, it's no trouble. A few sandwiches, a flask of coffee. Well, it's much appreciated. Nice for me, too. Lunch al fresco. <laughs> mm. Or a picnic, as we used to call it. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day for it. Yeah, it is. Might be changing tomorrow, though. We still need to crack on. Won't see you before nine again, then. No, I doubt it. I'll give Pip a call, though. See how the exams went. She was up and gone by the time I got back from talking to you at the clamp. Was she? That was quick. The tea must have done the trick. I thought her exams weren't till this afternoon. Must have asked you to pick her up in plenty of time. <laughs> that was unusually sensible. And he had. And that was unusually reliable. Oh, David, give them a bit of credit. Well, as long as she got there, that's the main thing. Good afternoon, Lua Loxley. Elizabeth Pargett is speaking. It's me. Pip, I didn't expect you to ring so soon. I had to talk to someone. Oh, how did it go? It was terrible, absolutely terrible. I'm sure it wasn't as bad as you think. It was. I didn't even take my business studies. I was too late. They wouldn't let me in. Oh, dear. But you were there for your biology. For all the good it did, I made a real hash of it. Yeah, you probably did better than you think. No, I didn't. I just couldn't think straight. Oh, I've ruined everything. No, you haven't. I have. What am I going to do? I know it feels like the end of the world. It is. No, trust me, it isn't. Uh, where are you? At college. I daren't go home. I can't face Mum and Dad, not yet. You're not going to tell them what happened? I can't. They'd be so angry. A little at first, perhaps. You but... won't tell them, will you? No, of course not. Thank you. But I still think it would be better if you did. And maybe not straight away, but... No. No, I told you. They'd just blame Jude. Stop me seeing him again. Oh, Pip... Sweetheart, I know everything must look very black. But even if you do have to take your exams again, you know, that's not so terrible. Lots of people do. Yeah, that's what Jude said. But Mum and Dad would think it was. No, you don't know that. I do. They're not like you. You understand. Well, I try. But so might they if you gave them a chance. No, I can't do it. I just can't. All right, all right. We won't talk about it anymore. Uh, have you had something to eat? I'm not hungry. 
Come on, you must be. You didn't have any breakfast. Look, get Jude to take you out to lunch, somewhere nice. Tell him you need cheering up. Yeah, all right. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. And if you want to talk again, I'm always here. I know. Good. Now you go and get some food, all right? Bye, Pip. Bye. Oh, heavens. Darling, are you ready for lunch now? Well, oh, yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. That was Pip on the phone. Oh. Well, how did she get on? Not very well. They wouldn't let her in to do the first exam, and she thinks she made a mess of the second. Oh, dear. And the worst thing is, she's too frightened to tell David and Ruth about it. But she'll have to. Yeah, of course she will. Oh, this is all David's fault. Not quite all, surely. What? If he hadn't taken such a dislike to Jude and, and felt he had to play the heavy father about it, she'd find it much easier to confide in them. Maybe so. But there's not much anyone can do about that now, is there? Well, I could talk to David. And tell him about Pip's exams? Of course not. Then what are you going to say? Oh, I don't know. I just can't bear the thought of Pip being so upset and, and feeling that her parents won't understand or want to help her. Of course they will. Yeah, I know, but I wasn't able to convince her of that. Maybe I'd stand a better chance with David. I <sighs> still don't see what you're going to say to him. If you can't tell him what's happened with Pip's exams, it's just going to sound like you're interfering for no good reason. Well, I've got to do something. You didn't hear how upset she was. I'm sure she was, but maybe when she's calmed down, she'll decide to tell him herself. Maybe. It would still help if David was a bit more receptive. No. Leave it alone, Lizzie. You could do more harm than good. Oh, morning, Pip. Hi, Dad. Oh, you're up early. So are you. Well, I want to get the silaging finished. Oh, yeah. What's your excuse? I just didn't sleep very well. And I'm doing an early shift at Lower Loxley. Oh, right. Do you want a cup of tea? I just made a pot. Oh, yes, please. I'll get a cup. Right. you got things the wrong way around, though, haven't you? How do you mean? Well, slept in when you had an exam. Get up early when you haven't. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, shall I pour the tea? Uh, yeah. Should be brewed by now. So, how did your exams go? Oh, well, you know... Yeah, but I don't. I'm so sorry, Pip. I was too tired when I got back yesterday evening to talk to you properly. That's all right. No, it's not. Oh, I wouldn't like you to think I don't care. I know that you do. So, tell all. There's not much to tell. Except... Except? I'm afraid I didn't do very well. Yay. Everyone always thinks they could have done better. Yes, well, I know I could. What was the problem? Well, you know I slept in. You still felt tired? Not exactly. Oh, Pip. Maybe going out the night before wasn't the best idea in the world. Well, maybe it wasn't. Well, you'll just have to be firm with Jude next time. With Jude? Well, it was his idea, wasn't it? No. This has nothing to do with Jude. Don't worry. I'm not going to go on about it. It's done now. Yes, it is. But if he wants you to go out on Thursday night, you know, with your exam on Friday... He doesn't. We haven't even talked about it. It wasn't Jude's fault. It was me who messed things up. Well, as long as you learn from your mistakes... It might not be quite as simple as that. Pip, look, don't worry, love. I'm sure you haven't done as badly as all that. Anyway, no point worrying now. No. Just concentrate on the next one. And no more late nights, eh? Oh, come on. Must be ready. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Oh, morning, Pip. Hi. I didn't expect you in today. I told you we'd cover for you. I didn't want to let you down as well. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. You were so kind yesterday. I'm glad I could help. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Don't worry about it. I wish I could stop worrying. I've let everyone down. No, you haven't. Come on, you made a mistake, that's all. Some mistake. 
Have you managed to tell your mum and dad what happened yet? I just couldn't. I was still trying to take it in myself yesterday. Yeah, yeah, of course. I did nearly tell dad this morning. Did you? I couldn't sleep and he was on his way out to do the silaging. Yeah. So it was all very quiet and peaceful and he was being really kind like he can be. He loves you. Till he started slagging off Jude. I told you he would. What did he say? That it was his fault I slept in. He kept me out late the night before, and that's just not true. Yeah, I know. I tried to tell him, but he just doesn't listen. Well, at least you started to say something. Maybe later. I can't face him again. Or Mum. I'm going round to Jude's when I've finished here. Well, don't give up, Pip. I, I know it's very hard, but well, I'm sure you would feel better if you did tell them. I don't know how to do it. I just, I just don't. You're here bright and early, Pip. Yeah, I don't always oversleep. Anyway, I'd better go see if they need me in the kitchen. Well, come and see me when you finish your shift. There must be something we can do. I wish there was, but I don't know what. Oh, dear. That doesn't sound very promising. No. Has she told David and Ruth yet? I'm afraid not. Well, if she needs to psych herself up... She did nearly tell David this morning. That's a start. Only then he started criticising Jude, so of course that shut her up. Oh dear, bad timing. It's such a shame, Nigel. She and David used to have such a good relationship. No, no. And they could have again. She said he was being really nice until Jude was mentioned. He's a good dad. She needs him. She wants to tell him. I've got to do something, Nigel. Oh, Lizzie. Don't you think they'll have to work it out for themselves? I wasn't expecting you. I wanted to catch you before you went out to the dairy. I've got such good news, Mum. Yes? I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's happened. I'm really pregnant. Oh, good Lord. Are you sure? Yes. I did the test first thing this morning. and It's positive. There's no doubt about it. I'm really pregnant. Oh, Helen... I wanted you to be the first to know. Oh, no, I'm so happy for you. Let me give you a hug. Oh. <laughs> I still can't quite believe it. I mean, it's, it's weird. I know. So silly. I mean, this, this is what I've been planning, but when I saw the result, I, I mean, this is really going to happen. Then there's going to be an actual baby. Doesn't seem possible, does it? <laughs> and it changes everything. I didn't think I could be this lucky. I just thought something would go wrong again. Oh, Helen, but it hasn't. No. No, it hasn't. Oh, Mum. <laughs> I'm so, so happy. Oh, stop. Dad, have you seen my... Oh, Helen, what's the matter? What's happened? <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm pregnant. Oh, good heavens. It's really going to happen, Dad. I'm going to have a baby. Oh, Tony? Well, I know it's what you wanted. It is. Then I'm glad you're happy. Oh, thank you, Dad. Thank <laughs> you. You can take that load down to the clamp then, Eddie. I'll just get... Oh. It's right, you go on, I'll just answer this. Morning, Elizabeth. Is this not a good time? Yeah, it's not particularly, no, I'm just in the middle of sidaging. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, could I call you later? Would that be better? Well, not really, no. I'm going to be hard at it till the light goes. Aren't you even breaking for lunch? Is it urgent? Well, I'd like to talk to you today if I could. Um, well, now's probably good a time as any. Eddie's just taking a load down to the clamp. Thanks. Well, I won't keep you long. All right. So, what's on your mind? It's about Pip. I'm a bit worried about her. Oh, I see. Why? She seems very stressed out about her exams. Really? But she's only got one more this week. I know, but... And that's her music. I, I thought she got that pretty well under control. I'm talking about the one she did yesterday. Well, I gathered she didn't feel that she'd done very well. I think it was a bit more than that. Oh, why? What did she say to you? I think it would be better if you talked to her yourself. But I did, this morning. I know, she said... That didn't really go very well, did it? Didn't it? Is that what she said? Maybe if you tried again, perhaps without mentioning Jude this time. <laughs> really? 
And why aren't I allowed to mention Jude? No, I didn't say that. I just don't think it's very helpful, that's all. Who put you up to this? Pip? <laughs> no, of course not. Or was it Jude himself? Oh, now you're just being ridiculous. Well, you seem to have got awfully chummy, getting him to design your website. I did no such thing. I thought he might be interested in taking a look at it, that's all. I mean, I know you like to think you're down with the kids, Elizabeth. Oh, I, I was trying to be pleasant to my niece's boyfriend. Maybe you should try it sometime. Uh, sorry, I don't actually feel the need to carry favour with him. Oh, and that's really working for you, is it? I don't remember asking for your advice. Oh, it might be a good idea if you took someone's. Elizabeth, Pip is my daughter. I know what I'm doing. You're alienating her, David, and she can't talk to you. Oh, but she can talk to you, I suppose. This isn't a competition. I'm worried about her. All right, well, look, thank you for your interest, but Ruth and I have got the situation completely under control. No, you haven't. Perhaps Pip doesn't confide in you quite as much as you think. She clearly hasn't told you about our deal. The Jude situation is sorted. Is it? Yes, it is. Pip's been buckling down to her revision. Yeah, I know, but the... So, thank you for your concern, but I know how to handle my own daughter. I'm only trying to now, help. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. If you just listen to me, all I'm saying is... Da David? David, are you there? Oh. I gather that didn't go very well. He just wouldn't listen. Oh, he's such an idiot. I was only trying to help him. I know you were, Lizzie. Then why didn't he let me? You wouldn't be very happy if he started telling you how to manage the twins, would you? I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Really? Yes. He must know I've got Pip's best interests at heart. I'm sure he does. But... He's so pig-headed. <laughs> you are a stubborn lot, you archers. Oh, I did think I was getting through to him to start with. Well, that's something. Yeah, until I mentioned Jude. It really is a red rag to a bull. Yes. Pip's right, he's completely irrational on the subject. He even asked me if Jude had put me up to it. Heavens. He got really nasty. Said I just wanted to get down with the kids. Oh, that's very unfair. Uh, you were right. I was just wasting my time. Look, it's a very difficult situation. Yeah, and David's making it worse. It would serve him right if Pip spends the whole of the rest of the week at Jude's. And do you think she will? What else can she do? She hates having to keep this from them. But with David behaving like this... Maybe she'll have better luck with Ruth. Well, I'm not going to suggest it. Keeping well out of it now. I really think that's all you can do. Well, not quite all. Sometimes people just have to find their own way. I can still be there for Pip. Someone's got to be. There's so much to think about now. Of course there is. It's so exciting. I just don't know where to start. Well, you've got nine months. And I'm going to need every minute, Mum. I suppose the first thing I should do is phone the clinic. Or get into work. Won't Kirsty be expecting you? Dad, you're always so practical. But yes, you're right, of course, I should. Well, maybe you can phone the clinic when you get there. And I'd take a few deep breaths before you get in the car. Oh, don't worry. I'll drive carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what they say. I will. Bye. <sighs> so, it's really happening. Yes. She's so excited. Yes. Thank you for what you said to her. I know it can't have been easy for you. Oh, it wasn't. I'm sure she appreciated it. I certainly did. I haven't changed my mind. I know. But I just couldn't burst her bubble. She was so happy. Yes, she is. Doesn't that comfort you at all? No, not really. But I'll try not to spoil things for her. You're a good father, Tony. Well, I try. Oh, you do more than that. Uh, more than Helen's poor baby's going to get, isn't it? Oh, Tony. Uh, I'm sorry, Pat. Helen may be happy, but you can't expect me to be. Is this the last load? You wish. No. Nope. We need to get at least a couple more up here today. We've done nothing but move pigs for weeks. That's because there's a lot to move. Don't worry, the end's in sight. No, it better be. Flash Harry was propping up the bar at the bull again last night. Like you never do. Oh, I haven't moved in. It's only for a week. Anyone would think you were just... Oh, what the hell was that? I tell you what's the potholes. Pretty big pothole. Come on, we better see what's happened. For something. Um, suet. 
Oh, sorry, some things didn't go back in the right place after the refurbishments. I wouldn't know where to find it anyway. Well, it should be uh, third shelf along on the top, blue and red packet. Third shelf along. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. That's it. Well, yeah. Oh, did you want a bigger packet? Only I'm afraid... No, no, it's just that... I didn't think it would look like that. <laughs> what did you think it would look like? I don't know, really. More exciting? <laughs> Are you planning to cook with it? Oh, that's the theory. Steak and kidney pudding. Oh, that's brave. Oh, you saw Jill's video on the village website. Yeah, and more to the point, Will did. Oh. Started on about how Clary used to make it and brought back all these happy childhood memories. Oh, and, and you're going to cook it for him as a treat? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I'm going to try to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aye, they're OK. None of them are injured. So, what's the problem? The wheel's come off. Oh, I can see that, but why? You should know, it's your fault. My fault? I wasn't anywhere near it. You were driving. It was nothing to do with my driving. So you say. The wheel came off because mud got into the bearings. And why did mud get into the bearings? Because we've been driving up and doing muddy tracks for the last two weeks. Yes, we have. Which is why you should have hosed the wheels down regularly and greased them. So how come it's mad you'll buy a sudden? It's your trailer. Would you use it most? No, no. Your trailer, you maintain it. You use it, you put it back in a fit state to be used again. Well, well there's no point in arguing about it, is there? Because you know I'm right. I'm more worried about my poor wee lassies. I mean, what are we going to do now? There you go. That's everything. Thanks. Oh, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> Mustn't forget your suit, must we? <laughs> oh, I suppose not. If I don't open it, can I have my money back? Oh, you'll be fine. It's not that different making suet pastry to ordinary. Oh, you're assuming I know how to do that. <laughs> Look, you just follow Jill's video. I'm sure you'll be fine. I'll keep the price in the till just in case. <laughs> <laughs> if you bring it back next week, it won't be anything to do with me, I'm afraid. Oh, no, of course not. I saw it in the Echo today, the... Community shop's opening soon, isn't it? Yeah. Next Wednesday evening's the big ceremony. Oh, it'll be a big change for you. Well, I'm hoping it won't be that different. But we'll see. And you'll be working at Bridge Farm too? Yeah, in the dairy. Oh, Clary was telling me about it. She's really looking forward to coming. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to working with her. And she'll be able to show me the ropes. Oh, I'm sure you'll pick it up quickly. Oh, I hope so. It was the same when I started at the Bull. I thought I'd never get the hang of it, pulling pints, working the till. Oh, you couldn't have been any worse than Vicky Tucker. Oh, it's all second nature to me now. You're taking on more shifts, I hear, when Kirsty goes. Yeah, that was a real bonus. Oh, must have been. And they've started using me for relief work. I'm covering for Jolene this lunchtime. Oh, why are you? Yeah, she needs to sort out her visa or something. Working today and planning to cook something new tonight. Oh, that's ambitious. No, I'm trying to stop Will thinking I'm neglecting him. Oh, isn't he keen on you working at the ball then? Well, he, he was fine at first. But then when I said I was taking on these few extra shifts of curse Oh, it? well, that's men for you. Oh, it's only till Sid and Jolene get back. <laughs> don't like change. Nails are same. Oh, I don't see the difference. Fuss about nothing. Bit more money coming into the ASO. <laughs> don't suppose he objects to that. Oh, he's not getting his hands on any of that. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry, girls. Be all right. Your Uncle Jazz will sort it for you. Could you get a signal? Yeah, it was much better from up there. Did you raise David? Can he help? Yes, we're in luck, thankfully. He finished silaging yesterday. Handy. So he's got a tractor going spare. Ace. And he can lend us a livestock trailer. Oh, so what are we waiting for then, eh? We're waiting for him to bring it over, aren't we? We can't go and fetch it ourselves. No, I suppose no. But as he's finished silaging, he can bring it round right away. Great. All well, sorted then, eh? All sorted? We haven't even begun yet. I'm so glad you had time to pop in for a coffee. Yeah, well, I had to come into Barchester anyway. And you know me. Never been known to pass up the chance of a brew on a gossip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have some news for you. Oh, Helen. <laughs> Is it? Are you? Yeah. You're pregnant? Oh, Helen, I'm so happy for you. Yes, so that's, am I. That's wonderful. That's the best news since... 
well, <laughs> this is the best news ever. <laughs> I'm glad you're so pleased. Oh, of course I'm. Come here, come here. <laughs> oh, I've never been this happy. Oh, come on now. There's no need for tears, is there? I don't seem to be the only one crying. <laughs> yeah, the tears of joy. But we're... Oh, man, we're a pair. Come on, let's compose ourselves. <laughs> All right. Yeah, especially you. <laughs> You're not supposed to be having any excitement now. Okay. Well, so you put your feet up and I'll put the kettle on and you can tell me all about it. Haven't you got that lot moved yet? No, I haven't. Me. How much may I've stopped trying? Oh, Jazza, we haven't got time for you to have a temper tantrum. It's a two-man job. Moving the pigs through this trail out of the Brookfield one isn't it easy. I know. So keep it on then, I can't do it myself. They don't want to go. In a minute. I just need to sort something with David. Where's he gone anyway? How come everybody disappears when there's work to be done? He's phoning Ruth, covering his work at Brookfield. He's doing us a favour, Jazza. He's doing you one. Look, once we've settled these pigs, you and David will have to go back and pick up the arcs. We got other good jobs. What are you going to be doing? Well, I'll have to go back and get a jack and a spare wheel for the trailer. Hmm. No heavy lifting involved, I notice. Sicky moving arts. Well, you'll be even sicker if you have to do it on your own. David can only help us out this morning. All right, all right, you've made your point. But don't expect me to go rushing my poor wee lassies. They've had a nasty experience. They're in shock. Yeah, well, they won't be the only ones if you don't get a move on. There was about... Oh, 30 seconds when I did think, oh my lord, what have I done? <laughs> and I gather you've got over that. Oh, it's as if the thought never crossed my mind. This is what I was always meant to do. Oh, it's wonderful you feel like that. Yeah, and, and quite a relief, to be honest. Is it? Yeah. Well, I hoped I'd feel like this, but I, I couldn't know. I, I couldn't be sure until it happened. Oh, well, of course not. But it's so powerful. <laughs> The baby's very real to me already. I just want to love it and look after it and be in its life forever. Just as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, I mean, how did the rest of the family react? Mum was pleased, of course. Really thrilled. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, she'll be looking forward to it nearly as much as you are. Oh, she is. And what about your dad? You have told him, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he came in when I was talking to Mum and I, well, just blurted it out. <laughs> I was so happy. And? Well, it was a rather a tense moment. Oh, not bad. But then he was sweet. Was he? Yeah. He said he knew it was what I wanted and he was glad it made me happy. But not that he was happy for you. Oh, well, that would be asking for a miracle. <laughs> I know he still hates the idea. Well, that's hard for you. Not so much now. Oh, how so? Well, now I know I'm right. He doesn't need to worry. But does that make things so different from the way they were before? Yes, because then there's the way he reacted. He didn't spoil my moment. No, he didn't. He loved me enough not to do that. Gosh, yeah, of course he loves you. Well, then he'll love the baby. It's as simple as that. I just have to wait. Yeah, and so who else is there, Tom? Mm, couldn't get hold of him yesterday. He's very busy with the pigs this week. What well, you told me before you told Tom? I couldn't wait any longer. Helen, I'm so touched. So Joe and Eddie are really excited. I'm not surprised. Thought they'd be doing well to get one book in for their campsite, let alone two. I'm right across the bank holiday weekend. Or any at all. Oh, they're making a big effort. Clary says Joe's polishing Barbarella's hooves. Oh, God. <laughs> it would be the lack of more basic facilities that would worry me. Oh, like what? Toilets. A hole in the ground and a shovel isn't my idea of all my Oh, cons. no, no, they've got a compost loo. What's that? A hole in the ground surrounded by bales of hay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give a pint, quick as you like. Oh, I'll get it. What's the matter with you? The morning I've had, you don't want to know. Oh, all right. We were driving a load of pigs up to Bridge Farm. The wheel only fell off the trailer. Oh, dear, was anyone hurt? My poor wee lasses were off his shook up. We had to borrow David Archer's trailer. We had to wait for him. And I had to do the pigs on my lonesome, of course. And David and me had to go and fetch the arcs. All right, all right. If I buy you this pint, will you shut up? Uh, maybe. All right, it's a deal. And I'd just like to say that Tom Archer had the nerve to say it was all my fault. As if I can help wheels fall off trailers. All right, you can say that. I could have done with you this morning. Friendly helping Hon. Well, you should have rung Harry. What? So he could put my pigs on his milk float? Well, he might have been able to fix the trailer. He's good at mending things. 
Oh, is he? He's done quite a few little DIY jobs for us since he's been staying here. Like what? Oh, here's your pipe. Thanks very much. Oh, I'm getting this for Jazzer. Do you want to go and check how things are in the playmans? Yeah, right you are. Mm. Thanks, Valen. You're a pal. As long as we've heard the last of you moaning. Huh. Well, it's Flash. How have you been doing for you then? Uh, you know that flat pack unit in my bedroom? What? The one I put together for you? There's no these horns on that. Well, it's just replaced a few screws. I'm not blaming you, Jazzer. Screws come loose. Ah, if people loosen them. So that's how he spends his evenings here, is it? Woodwork? Well, we're going to watch a DVD tonight. Just the two of you? Yeah. We don't think Mum and Sid will fancy it. I'm at a loose this evening myself. I'll keep you company. I don't think you'll fancy it either. How no? What's it about? What's it called? Well, uh, it's called Hidden. And it starts with this guy getting sent weird videotapes of things he's been doing. All right, on my street. Good mystery thriller. What's not you like? It's in French. Oh. I didn't think you spoke French. No, but I speak English. It'll have the, what do you call, subtitles, won't it? Yes, but... Do you think I can't read either? Hi, Helen. Oh, Tom, great, I've got you. Um, is this a good time? No, not really. I'm having a hell of a morning. Oh, well, don't worry then. I'll, I'll ring some other time. Are you sure? I mean, if it's urgent. No, no, it'll keep. Is that the lambs off to the abattoir? Yes, yes, that's the last lot. Oh, good. Then you can start getting ready for our evening out, then. What, already? Well, you know Lillian wanted us to come early. Uh, only because after seven she's stuck with Matt on her own. Now, Brian... Well, their drinks too last week wasn't exactly lively. Well, he'd only just been released. Shades of the prison house, you know. Don't start getting all literary on me. He's hardly Nelson Mandela, is he? No. Even so, it's bound to take him a bit of time to adjust. I suppose so. Oh, I'm sure he's quite back to his old self now. Exactly. That's what's worrying me. Livelier, I meant. Lillian thinks that prison's changed him. Does she? Mm Mm-hmm. For the better, she thinks. He's much more appreciative of her, anyway. Good. I shall believe it when I see it. Oh, come on, Bran. Hi, Tom. Hi. I saw your notes. Good. I'm so sorry. I really am. It was just about the last straw. It must have been. It's bad enough having to get up at the crack of dawn and drive miles to work. But to have to do it on an empty stomach and with no caffeine. I know. Because somebody's had the last of the milk. I'm sorry. I thought there was more. Well, there wasn't. There wasn't anything. I couldn't even have a piece of toast or a glass of squash. It's just been such a crazy week. You know, moving the pigs and then that wheel coming off. I know. Just don't do it again. I won't. The pigs are all moved so I can go and do a big shop now. That would be nice. Better than that, I'll cook as a special end-of-the-week celebratory meal. How would that be? Something smells good. Well, I hope it tastes good, too. Yeah, of course it will. Do you want a hand with those veg? No, no, it's fine. You go for your walk. No need to disrupt your routine. You know, I do like to go for a little constitutional before I'm banged out for the night. Max. But this evening, with such charming company, I'm sure I won't even notice I can't escape. They might if you carry on like that. Now go for your walk. Heavens. Is there anything left in the shop? Uh, we were running a bit low. Oh, you must have been. Plus, I want to make Brenda a special meal tonight. Ooh, that's very thoughtful of you. We've both had quite a hard week. Thank God it's Friday, eh? Absolutely. We've been asked out for a celebratory meal, too. Oh, yeah? Mm, at the Dower House. Right. And I just popped down to buy Lillian some chocolates. Oh, oh you take that. Oh. And I'll get on. Thanks. Bye, yeah, bye. Oh, hi, Bren. You just leaving? I wish. Oh, Tom, I'm so sorry. I told you it was frantic here. I've got to work late. Oh, I see. Really sorry. Well, it's not your fault. So, what are you going to do for food? They're bringing pizzas in. It's this launch. Last-minute panic. Can't be helped, I suppose. 
that you were going to make me a special meal and everything. You haven't started cooking, have you? No, no, don't worry. We can have it tomorrow. They ever let me out of this place. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Love you. Love you too. Great. Oh, well. Tom? Hiya. You said you fancied a chat? Yeah, I, I was thinking face to face. Suits me. Why don't you come round for supper? These chocolates look delicious, Jenny. Thank you so much. Oh, just a little something. This wine looks very special. Well, I hope you like it. We'll save that for later. Here's something to be going on with. Jennifer? Ooh, thank you. Right. Cheers. Push cap. Oh, thank you, darling. Now, I'd like to propose a little toast. To Brian and Jennifer. Us? <laughs> what did we do? A lot. I know how you looked after Lillian while I was away, and um, I really appreciate it. Here, here. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, to Brian and Jennifer. To Brian oh. and Jennifer. <laughs> This is lovely. Yeah, I popped into Borchester for it this morning. Oh, yes. Is that the first time you've been in since yes, you Yes, actually. You find the old place much changed? <laughs> well, hardly, darling. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I couldn't find Jack's. Oh, no, no, of course that has changed. I only wanted a quick cup of coffee and I spent half an hour looking for the place. Oh, dear. Spotted it in the end because Kenton was standing on the other side of the street admiring his new shop. Yeah. Huh? You've had a lucky escape. The rest of us have had a blow-by-blow -blow account of every tiny detail. <laughs> I was going to cook something special for Brenda. And we're waiting for her. Well, that's good. No, the... no, we're not. You're stuck with me, I'm afraid. <laughs> but you said... Yep, yeah, that was the plan. But she's working late again. Oh, I see. It was going to be a romantic dinner for two. We could certainly do with one. Ah, oh, and now you're stuck with me. No, no, it'd be nice to have some company. Oh, are things really that bad? Yes, they are. We never see each other. Honestly, we don't. Well, she works late that often. Yeah, and with that drive on top of it... Yeah, it must be a killer. Well, don't say that. She's so tired when she gets up, so sleepy when she's coming home. I get really worried. Oh, Tom. It's such a relief when I hear the key in the door. That is, if I haven't already fallen asleep myself. Yeah, it must be really hard. But this job means so much to her. Yeah, I know it does. You've got to support her, Tom. You can't ask her to give it up, no matter how worried you are. I wouldn't. But she can't go on like this. Something's got to change. Well, I think it's amazing you can joke about it. It would drive me crazy. What? Us having to stay in together every evening? No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but having no work to do, don't you go mad with boredom? Hmm. He's got work. I'll find enough to keep myself occupied. Oh, good for you. You could do with acquiring a few hobbies, though, perhaps. Oh, we won't have time for hobbies when we get our new company set up. New company? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it amuses us to kick a few ideas around, you know. Yeah, but you can't start a new company, man. No, but I can. Oh, yes, this property thing. Hmm. Well, you've spoken to Jennifer about it. Yeah. Oh, have I got it wrong? No, no, I was just helping Lillian, you know, research some possibilities. Nothing definite. Well, we thought of a name. A few. Yeah, we thought of lots. It's uh, an alternative to Scrabble. Oh, just a game, then. Oh, come on, darling, give them a break. They've got to find something to do to while away the weary evenings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's mm. right. Mm. Oh, that was delicious. I'm glad you liked it. I loved it. Brenda's loss was definitely my game. Wow, room for pudding? There's pudding? Oh, of course, I'm a man. There's always pudding. Maybe, if I had a bit of a breather. OK, well, you take one. And tell me what it was you wanted to talk to me about. Oh, that. Oh, I've been so busy burdening you with my problems, I haven't let you get a word in edgeways. Oh, this isn't a problem. I'm pregnant. Oh, Helen. Sorry. Well, Tom, don't say that. I hoped you'd be happy for me. I meant I'm sorry I forgot you might find out this week. 
I am happy. Really. And the knives go in this little compartment, don't they? <laughs> You're really getting quite domesticated. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> Bit better host than I was last week, anyway, I hope. Life and soul. It was me who put my foot in it. Did you? Where? Darling, don't pretend you didn't notice. When I started blabbing on about our company. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I was just excited about it. I didn't think. No, I'm done. Yeah, my big mouth, broadcasting all our business to the world. Nah, I'm not bothered about that. But I do want this to be something we can work at together. Just the two of us. And so do I, darling. You know what Bry's like. Loves to stick his oar in. Give the benefit of his vast experience. Yeah. And we don't want that, do we? No. We don't. Drinking alone, that's a bad sign. Brenda at last. No, oh. worse. You had company. A quiet dinner for two by the look of it. Didn't take you long to find yourself another woman. I haven't. Not that I blame you. The one you've got isn't much fun. Oh, I'm shattered. Anything left in that bottle? Yeah, here you are. Thanks. Oh, that's better. So, who is she? <laughs> My sister. A likely story. She had some news. Oh, she's pregnant. You see? You remembered it was this week. Good luck to her. If she can manage a baby in a career, she's a better woman than I am. I can't cope with a job and an adult relationship. Don't say that. We're all right. We're managing. No, we're not. Look at us. You went and got all that food for me. I hadn't cooked it. It was so sweet of you. After I left you that nasty note and been off with you on the phone. <laughs> I deserved it. Just because you forgot to buy some milk. Like I couldn't have got some. You don't pass quite so close to herds of cows as I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous, us running out of milk when your dad's a dairy farmer. <laughs> yeah, and your dad's a milkman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's not funny, really. No, no, it's not. <sighs> I worry about you, all that driving. I know, but I can't give up this job. After all I've been through to get it, I just can't, Tom. I'm not asking you to. Well, then what can I do? That commute is insane. It would be much more sensible if you stayed in Leicester at least a few nights a week. You'd be okay with that? No, I'd hate it. Because at least I wouldn't keep imagining you under the wheels of some lorry on the motorway. Oh, Tom. I'd miss you. Mm, I'd miss you too. But you can't go on like this, Bren. No, I can't. I'll start asking around the office. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, no. Oh, I told you it'd be better than last week. No, it was. No, it was a fascinating evening. Matt was so attentive to Lillian. Hmm, wasn't mm, he? So maybe his meeting Paul wasn't such a bad idea. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, realising he had a potential rival seems to have made him more protective of her. What Matt's protecting is his future investment. What future investment? The money he's planning to make from this new company he's persuading Lillian to set up. Oh, he said he was just advising her. No, you don't believe that, surely. She'll just be the figurehead. Matt'll be pulling the string. Darling, I think you're being very cynical. You think prisoners change Matt? Yes. Well, it has. <laughs> oh, no, it hasn't, Jenny. Not one tiny little bit. <laughs> 